the chairman of the session, Dr. Omar Abdul Rahman, uh, distinguished guests, and uh, all the colleagues of Science Council of Asia, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for the opportunity to speak this morning. The title of my speech is the From Myth to Science. Well, uh, now currently I'm president of Science Council of Japan, but I'm also the president of one of the Japanese national universities, namely University, Toyohashi University of Technology. Uh, let me begin with the very close relationship, our university and Malaysia. Uh, the, our university, university uh, Toyohashi University of Technology, is a unique university, one of the national universities, but only one university which has the overseas campus, which is located in Penang Island, Malaysia. Uh, the, the picture uh, doesn't look like a university campus, but uh, this is the part of our university. It uh, looks like a summer vacation house in Penang Island. Uh, we established this uh, the uh, new campus uh, this year, and uh, we are dispatching the student here, and those students got some education in this facility, and go around uh, the, to the uh, factories or uh, uh, business uh, in the island or uh, throughout Malaysia. So. Uh, our university is going to be the bridge between Malaysia and the Southeast Asia and Japan. Here I found the uh, Dr. Uh, the Ho Chin Shan, one of the graduates of our university, now the professor of uh, University Technology Malaysia. We have very strong Malaysian student group. That is the second largest group after Japanese student in our university. So uh, I feel very comfortable and uh, very close uh, in this room. Uh, so uh, I'm very happy to extend our uh, very close relationship with the uh, Malaysian uh, people and uh, the Penang Island uh, toward the future. So uh, coming back to my subject, well, uh, first of all, I like to say the year of 2015, next year, uh, will be very important year, uh, especially the relationship between the earth and the human activities. I like to raise three points. First of all, this slide shows that the United Nations will revise its Millennium Development Goals, MDGs, in fall 2015. The present Millennium Development Goals was set up in year 2000, consisting of, as you may know, eight goals, 21 target metrics. Originally, MDGs were made to promote sustainable development. Therefore, three factors, that is environmental preservation, economic development, and social equity, were stressed important. These three factors are, of course, included in MDGs, but uh, poverty eradication and other equity subjects became more stressed than others. From this point of view, the equity of the people living in various continents and countries uh, secured importantly. Considering that uh, economic disparities and the difference of living standards are still large, and uh, we haven't yet been successful to narrow them for the last 15 years, I have no doubt about that the necessity of social equity for sustainable development because extreme poverty causes short life expectancy in people and instability 
in society. Probably the new MDGs starting from 2015 will state the continuous importance of poverty eradication policies to be applied on global issues. This is the first point、uh, related to sustainable development issue. The second one, the International Strategy for Disaster Risk Reduction of United Nations will have once a decade conference for disaster risk reduction. These events were so far held in Yokohama and Kobe in Japan and will be held in 2015 in Sendai, Miyagi Prefecture. Obviously, the reason why disaster event is held in Japan is very clear that we are vulnerable to natural disasters. Kobe was striken by great earthquake in 1995, and Sendai is a part of areas attacked by huge tsunami in 2011. The conference、uh, will have several purposes. I mean, conference in Sendai will have several purposes. First, to show how the areas striken by tsunami are reconstructed. Of course, the reconstruction hasn't yet been completed, but、uh, reconstruction projects are taking place in more than 300 communities. Ranging from large communities at the center of the cities to small fishing villages. Secondly, we have to disseminate lessons for disaster reduction, which we learned in this disaster, to the rest of the world, as I mentioned later in various ways. Of course, the Sendai Conference next year will be the largest opportunity to show. What we have been doing for the reconstruction. Thirdly, we like to talk about the future of Fukushima Prefecture, which had a nuclear plant, plant accident. There is no more severe emission of radioactive materials to the outside environment recently. However, The plants are still remaining out of control, and the radiation level is still high in wide areas surrounding the nuclear power plants. More than 100,000 people are still live outside their hometowns because of high radiation level. It is worried that、uh, those people must remain outside their hometowns. Even for a long time. Eventually, part of them must begin their new lives in other communities. We have to show the present situation in Fukushima to the world and、I、like to talk about the future of Fukushima and the people with the participants in Sendai. The third point.、Uh, Which has the turning point in 2015 is the future of. The theme of the conference is another important subject, which will have turning point again in、uh, 2015. Recently, ICS and the Alliance informed us that、uh, five country, six institute bidding organization was supposed to be selected. As the permanent secretariat of the future Earth. And the Science Council of Japan is one of the organizations constituting the permanent secretariat. Why we are selected as a one of the,、uh, the permanent secretariat organizations?、Uh, simply, we have a very tough negotiator inside SCJ, Dr. Kasuga. Uh, as a result of her、uh, performance, then、uh, we will be selected as a, one of the members of the permanent secretariat. So、uh, we have to take on the very tough job. 
from now on. Anyhow, we'll start working together as the permanent secretariat with the other organizations shortly, firstly co-working with the tentative secretariat, then gradually becomes independent. Japan as well intends to host regional hub in Asian region. Lin, led by Dr. Yasunari, will take on this duty. In addition to those international activities for future of, we are going to set up domestic management and research structure for future of research programs. As you may know, and as we, we can see it in the main theme of this conference, Future Earth is supported by scientific Earth observations, so far done by international research networks, namely WCLP, IGBP, Diversitas, IHDP. And I'm sure that the scientific approach to find changes of the Earth will be more important than before because serious changes of global environments are reported one after another. Therefore, one of the most important activities that the Future Earth Program should conduct is obviously to support and promote the scientific Earth observation researches through providing research funds and uh, uh, strengthening the global research network. But this is not enough. Future Earth idea was created based on the recognition that uh, only scientific observation wasn't enough to apply the result of those observations to change the direction of the global environments from dangerous scenario to stable one. In order to make use of observation results for improving the global environments, we have to know causes of dangerous changes and especially man's activities which cause those changes. And furthermore, we have to work on the people to change their activities so that they are not deteriorating the global environments. Future Earth is focusing on how to extend the movements which tackle with the improvement of global environments. Therefore, the role of the Secretariat will be working with different kinds of people, from scientists to citizens' organizations and industries, to connect scientific evidence to our daily actions. These uh, three issues are coming to their respective turning point in 2015 through having important conferences or statements. The preparation for them have already begun this year, including this Science Council of Asia conference in which we are talking about future Earth from Asia. In my following talk, I'd like to discuss the relationship between disaster reduction issues and the future Earth. Well, yeah. Uh, disaster is often explained using the concept of hazard and the disasters. If we take up natural disasters. They are caused by natural hazards. When large-scale natural hazards, such as typhoon, high tide, tornado, tsunami, local downpour, happen and strike men and their properties, then they are called disasters. We don't say that a disaster happens when we have even extreme natural hazards, but without any damage on men or their properties. Therefore, the measures to protect man's life and the property from natural hazards is first of all to escape 
or put our properties in advance away from affected areas of natural hazards. But at the same time, it is considered important to control men's activities so that they don't aggravate the possibilities of natural hazards. Because mass consumption energy, for example, is proved to cause global warming through increasing greenhouse, greenhouse gas emission, and it is said that uh, the global warming causes unusual climate changes which trigger hazardous climate more, than, more often than before. Of course, we can't say that all natural hazards are caused by men's activities, but many of them are understood pure natural phenomena beyond our control. As I mentioned earlier, it is important that one of the lessons we drew in the Great East Japan, uh, the earthquake and the disaster in 2015, was that uh, we have to realize the concept of disaster reduction. In Japanese terminology, disaster prevention was more popular than disaster reduction, especially after Chile tsunami in 1960, which struck a wide range of coastal areas in Japan, including the same area of Tohoku, striking by tsunami this time. The policy to protect seaside areas from tsunami by sea walls and water breaks became popular. Because the tsunami was relatively low in Chile tsunami, and the people thought tsunami can be protected by those man-made facilities. Thus the government set up a new law to construct banks at the coastal areas of Tohoku region. However, huge tsunami destroyed or went over them to bring serious damage to the communities behind them this time. Obviously, the scale of tsunami this time was much rather than Chile tsunami, and any other tsunami happened that area in the recorded history. We learned Disaster prevention facilities are not effective because natural hazards beyond the designed criteria may happen, like this time. But once large-scale disaster prevention facilities are built, the myth of safety was created. The local people use lands based on the reliability that those facilities always protect their communities from natural hazards. But it was shown that uh, this is not true, actually. Therefore, only disaster prevention facilities cannot protect the communities. We have to also consider safe location of the communities, especially houses. As aged people or physically handicapped people who can't move, easily may stay at home because the houses must be located at a safe ground where the flooding doesn't come. The lesson indicate tsunami evacuation buildings or towers with enough height are also effective. Finally, evacuation roads and places should be prepared so that uh, people can evacuate when their houses are likely to be striking by tsunami or flooding. This combination of three measures means we have to give up sometimes our property to save our life. The, because uh, we locate, for example, properties for businesses at a lower ground for convenience then uh, we have to abandon them. The best choice, finally, is 
having the business facilities at the low and convenient areas and the residential areas at a safe place from natural hazards. This is our lesson from this disaster. Simply don't believe in myth. Keep safety based on the evidence. Well, in the areas where the tsunami came, the reconstruction project took into practice based on the, these policies. The relocation of communities are taking place in more than 300 districts in Tohoku region. But the lessons must be applied for the regions where the next huge natural hazard may happen. Those areas range from Tokyo to Kyushu throughout the Japan, where the people spend daily peaceful lives nowadays. Therefore, it is extremely difficult for them to move their houses in advance from existing location to safer ground due to the cost and the inconvenience of the relocation. Eventually, we have to apply a long-time strategy to increase safety of the communities. First, providing evacuation roads and places is most important to increase the safety of a community because the evacuation facility can be provided in a shortest period among three and are effective for saving the people's life immediately. Then, public facilities such as schools, kindergarten, hospitals, welfare facilities should be relocated when they are rebuilt so that they occupy the central location of new community places. Since those facilities are expected to induce housing location gradually around it, them, this process can stimulate the construction of the safer new community although it takes a long time. The fortunately, for this purpose, our population of Japan began decreasing. It is a good chance to avoid land use in lower and vulnerable ground and uh, uh, move them to safer ground in our country, Japan. This relocation policy is generally called compact city policy in which houses located in the suburbs which low dense, with low density are expected to be relocated to designated areas in the center with higher density. Well, the lessons we learned from the disaster in 2011 shows we can't protect our life and the property if we simply continue the way of life we have been doing. We have to change it somehow to make our society safer from disaster reduction point of view. The same idea can be applied to the sustainable development of our future Earth too. It was already pointed out that uh, the way of energy consumption must be changed to reduce greenhouse gas emission. This does not mean the mere saving energy, but can mean the development of new energy resources with low carbon so that we can use energy without emitting greenhouse gas. Likewise, science and technology is now expected to create new way of life to fulfill the conditions facing us. One of these conditions is obviously safer community to avoid serious damage of natural disaster, as I described before. Another one is more environmental friendly energy supply and consumption, which was discussed already in global warming context. Future Earth may give us the opportunity to think of this in a more holistic manner. We have at least the following assumptions. The human activities of 7 billion people become 
large enough to affect natural activities of the Earth. Not only climate, but also the movement of the Earth's crust, the movement of oceans. Therefore, we must consider how we can control our activities not to trigger dangerous change of the Earth. Of course, sciences must be further developed to clarify more about causal relationship between the man's activities and the Earth environments. And also, science and technology should provide the measures to control men's activities affecting negatively the environment through providing alternative measures to attain the same purpose without negative effects. Finally, these alternative measures require people's support to become popular and effective to improve the negative impacts given to the earth that the past measures have been giving. From my point of view, the dissemination of effective measures based on the development of science and technology is beyond more scientific discoveries. Well, finally, I like to discuss the what subjects should be taken up under the main theme of futures in Asian context. I like to propose the idea of gentle community as a goal of building community activities. Firstly, a gentle community means a smart community in which the various kinds of appropriate technology are applied for improving quality of infrastructure, public services, and living environments, which less, with lesser energy consumption. ICT is fully used to collect information on people's demands and on service supplies. At the same time, the gentle community means secondary a friendly community where the community people help each other with a good human network. Eventually they can feel their community is easy and comfortable to live. Finally, thirdly, a gentle community should mean symbiosis between nature and the man-made facilities. For urban communities, people can live with rural atmosphere. Well, Asian cities are growing and are likely to cause environmental problems. <clears throat> Too much energy consumption and uh, enlargement of economic disparities. Therefore, it is worth applying a gentle community idea to Asian growing cities. That is my conclusion. Thank you very much for your attention.